Okay, this lesson is for section 3.2 in our textbook. Um, we're going to be dealing with graphs of functions. So we talked yesterday about um, what a function is and what a function's not. So one of the things that you want to make sure you're able to do is memorize these six basic graphs here um, for these functions that we use and see a lot. So these are mother functions, and I want to make sure that you know their name, the equations that define these mother functions, at least two points, you can find at least two points on the graph of the function, and that you're able to state the domain and the range from memory. So these things are really important so that when you get to um, you know, a test or a quiz, you're able to get through this stuff pretty quick because um, if you're struggling to make a table every time you have to graph something or you don't understand what the shape is supposed to look like, when you get to translations and a lot of different transformations, it's going to be really hard for you. So make sure you commit these to memory. Okay, now um, I'm sure you've heard of the vertical line test. I just want to talk about that real briefly. Um, it's easy to tell if a function is a function by simply using the vertical line test. So if I create a vertical line anywhere on this graph, the fact that it only intersects one time with this vertical line means that this is a function. Okay. Um, in the second example here, if I create a vertical line, now it passes through this graph twice. So this is not a function. This would be a relation, but it's not a function. Um, this is the same idea like, you know, Tank can't have two birthdays, right? This would represent him having two different birthdays because he's our X input. All right, now you're also going to see a little bit different notation now. Um, before, you know, we would define this as like our X and our Y axis, and we'd say, all right, at this point here, this would be X comma Y, right? We would create that order point and call it X, Y. Well, now what we're going to do, we still have our, um, our independent and dependent axis, but when we see um, a value here, let's say we make that value a, this point up here, since we're using function notation, is now f of a. So a comma f of a is how we're going to represent this coordinate as opposed to x, y, because over here, this is the value f of a, if this is the graph of f of x. Okay, so a, a new, newer, I guess, um, idea for the notation that you're going to see. All right, now, um, real quick, let's go through a few examples on whether it's a function or not. In this very first example, um, it, it passes the vertical line test, right? There's no two points where it intersects twice on, in a vertical line. This is also called a um, continuous function because anywhere I draw my curve here, um, I'm not picking up my pen, right? So this is called a continuous function. So this is a function. Now, in the second example, um, this does not pass the vertical line test. If you see here, we've got two different um, outputs for this input. So this is not a function. And although number three here is very, very similar to this, like the fact that now it's um, a discontinuous, this is discontinuous, when I create my vertical line to pass through here, I only have one output because this is an open circle indicating that that point is not actually on the graph. So the point 1, 1 does not belong to the graph of this function. So this is a discontinuous function. There's only one output for every input here. Okay. Um, you're going to see uh, different um, functions that are defined by multiple uh, equations. So. We call those piecewise defined functions or just piecewise functions. Now, this picture here is dis discontinuous, um, and we have different um, equations that define this graph over here. So let's start with just finding f of 1. So f of 1, my input is 1. So I'm going to go to where x is equal to 1 here, and my output is negative 4. This is the y value for uh, that input. For f of 4, uh, this is where x is equal to 4. You see you've got two different circles here. You don't want to use your open circle, right? That's where the graph is not defined at that point. We want to use this point here, and we get f of 4 equaling 0. Alternatively, when um, we're asked to find um, an input, when we are given an output, so in this example here it says, find x when f of x is equal to negative 2. So in other words, if this is true, what is what is x? So we're going to go to negative 2 on our graph, and we get two different x values here. x is equal to negative 2, but it is also equal to positive 2, right? These are your x values when f of x is negative 2. 
All right, now when we write the domain and the range of this function, for domain, you always want to make sure you're looking from left to right, okay? So notice that this graph is going to negative infinity, right, in that direction. So from negative infinity up to the point uh, x equals negative 4, so I'm going to have to negative 4 with an open, this is an open interval because this is not a filled in circle. We also have x values within here that define this piecewise function from negative 2, close bracket here, negative 2 all the way to 4. Now 4 is within the domain, although here it's not on, uh, it's not defined there at 4, but it is within the domain because we still have an x value here um, of 4. So finally we have the union of, uh, oh, you know what, I messed that up. Even though this looks as though um, uh, you, would, you would need two separate intervals, you actually don't, because if you look at this here, the domain continues to positive infinity after this, so I could have just written from negative 2 all the way to infinity here, positive infinity, with an open bracket. You could, I guess, write this as negative 2 to 4, uh, close bracket, and then again from 4 to infinity, but if you're going to do this, do you see how these here kind of contradict each other, that 4 is not within the graph, but 4 is, so you get rid of that and just say from 2 to infinity. Okay, so that would be the correct notation for this. All right, now for the range, you are looking from low to top, right? The lowest point on the graph to the highest point on the graph. Well, this does have a low point. Your low point here is at, uh, when x is 0, you get negative 4, I believe. Yeah, this is negative 4. So my range uh, includes negative 4. And if you look at your values, they stop here. You have a high point again. So from low to high here, that's uh, y equals 0. So close bracket. And then I have this portion of the graph where y is equal to just 2. So I'm going to use that as just the, the number 2 here. I'm not going to put that in interval notation. I'm just including the number 2. And then I have another value here where y is a low point here at uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So an open bracket here, 5, and then it's going to positive infinity. And that would represent the range of this piecewise function. So they are a little bit trickier because you have to look at it part by part. Um, but yeah, that's the, the general idea for piecewise. And you're going to get more practice with that in class as well. All right, now to define our function, um, I just want to get used to what this is going to look like when we actually start graphing some piecewise functions. But let's just take a look. Um, obviously, this is a horizontal line defined by y equals 2, right? So when, when x is less than 4, negative 4, I should say, so if x is less than negative 4, then f of x is equal to 2, okay? For this portion of the graph, if x is in between, so I'm going to write this as a range actually, if x is in between negative 2 to 4, okay, then f of x is actually equal to this graph here, something that you would hopefully um, just be able to recognize right away, especially after you memorize your six mother functions. This is an absolute value graph, right? Now this absolute value graph has been translated down four units, and we're going to talk more about translations, but hopefully you understand why I'm writing this as the absolute value of x minus 4, because our vertex 0, 0 has now been moved to 0, negative 4. Okay, and then our last piece here, this is actually um, the right-hand side of a parabola, so this would be like y equals x squared, right? Well, we also translated this here. So if x is greater than 4, then f of x is equal to, and this is, like I said, a parabola, and I'm going to put this in vertex form. So my new vertex is 4, 5 for this uh, parabola. So I write that as x minus 4 squared plus 5. So that's um, the definition of this piecewise function. Now. If you weren't able to really see why I'm getting these points, that's all right. We're going to talk more, like I said, about translations in um, section 3, 4, I believe. So after your quiz, we're going to do a lot more examples um, with this so that you can actually write these um, equations very quickly and define a piecewise function quicker. All right, now, to find the domain and range of these functions here, I'd like you guys to pause 
try these and then um, check with the key. Okay, so I'll do those at the very end. I'm going to finish off here with graphing a piecewise function. So when you're graphing a piecewise function, um, one of the things that you should be able to do once you have those graphs memorized is, you know, understand what the shape of each of these look like. Now, negative x cubed, this is a cubic function normally looks like this, but if we're, we look at this and we're like, oh, that's actually a reflection across the y-axis. If you remember from, you know, chapter um, one, that's a reflection. So now I should get a graph that kind of looks like that, okay? So I'm, I'm just using some of my old knowledge from previous chapters to understand what that's going to look like before I even graph it. But one of the things you can do, of course, is also just plug in values that fall within this range. So from negative 2 to 2, my function is defined by negative x cubed. So if I plug in f of negative 2, then f of negative 2 is the same as the opposite of negative 2 cubed, which turns into 8. So my first point here is going to be negative 2, 8. Um, I'm going to pick a couple more values. I'm just going to do 0, though. Um, so f of 0 is going to be, of course, 0 still. Let's do f of negative 1, too. So f of negative 1 is the opposite of negative 1 cubed, which gives me a positive 1. And f of 1 is negative 1 cubed, which is negative 1. And the last point, f of 2, is going to equal negative uh, 8 this time. Now, when I draw this point in at 2, negative 8, though, I'm going to make that an open circle. Because if I look at the range here, that point 2, 8 does not actually belong to negative 8, I should say. does not belong on the graph of this function. Okay, so I'm keeping that in an open circle. And that's part of my graph. Now, if x is greater than negative 2, so, or I'm sorry, x is greater than positive 2, so at f of 2, I'm going to find another value, the absolute value of 2 is 2. So I come up to 2, 2, and I create a point, and this time I have a closed circle here because it is defined on that function. And if I continue to, to plug in values like f of 3, the absolute value of 3 is just 3, so I end up with this portion of my absolute value, V shape. Okay? Alright, now if we want to define the range of this function, um, the range of the function is going to be from your low point to your high point, right? So I have a low point here, down here at uh, negative 8. Okay? Um, my high point, since this keeps continuing to positive infinity, there, uh, my high point is actually infinity, right? So it's just going to be negative 8 with an open uh, bracket all the way to positive infinity. And that would represent the range of this piecewise function. If we wanted to do domain, I don't have that listed here, but let's talk about the domain here as well. The domain of this piecewise function, you can actually see it from back here. Um, it is going to be from negative 2 to positive infinity because you have from left to right, you have um, a minimum value for your x, but as you continue here, you this since this goes to positive infinity, you don't have a maximum value for your x, so it's just from negative 2, close bracket, to positive infinity, open bracket. So there's your domain and range. All right, that's the end of the lesson. I'm going to go back now and um, go through those three examples if you uh, need to see those worked out. Okay, so the domain of this function here, we read domain from left to right, so this graph goes off into negative infinity, so negative infinity up until the point, this is going to be discontinuous, right, because I pick up my pencil here and I have to rewrite my range, or my domain again since I had to pick up my pencil, but uh, this is stopping at zero, so close bracket here, so from negative infinity to zero, and then it picks back up again at x equals, oh I'm sorry, that's not zero, that's five, under. Um, close bracket still. So the x value here is 5. I just looked at that and I thought that was a, a y-axis because I'm blind. All right, now it picks back up here, right, this x value. So at 7, it's going to be an open bracket and it goes to positive infinity since this continues in the uh, positive x direction. All right, now for the range, you want to look low to high. Your low point here is at negative 1 open circle on negative 1, so I have an open bracket there. And if I if I kind of pick up, this is a little bit easier to, to understand, but like I continue forever, I never pick up my pencil here. So the range is going to be from negative 1 just to infinity. Some people get confused because they see like 
the, you know, you have two separate bra um, two separate graphs here, and they're like, well, what about all these values? Well, these are defined, and they're defined here on, on this line here. So it's from negative 1 to positive infinity. All right, in the next example, the domain here, because if I look, um, you know, I'm going from negative infinity all the way to here, and even though I jump to this value over here, I still cover all reals, right? Every single um, uh, x value here is within the domain, so it's for, just from negative infinity to positive infinity. For the range, I do have a low point. My low point is at negative 3. So I have negative 3 all the way to positive infinity. Okay, it's the same same kind of problem as over here in the first example. This does go to positive infinity. All right, the last one I think is the trickiest one. Um, for the domain, it's very similar to what we just did. It, it does cover all reals, right? The domain here is going to be all reals, so from negative infinity to positive infinity. The range, though, has a, uh, a disjoint. Well, you want to write this as the uh, union of two different intervals. So let's look at the range here. Now, low point on this graph, obviously, this is going to negative infinity, right? So from negative infinity oops, up until you get to this point here at A, which is going to have a closed bracket, this would represent your range. Now, it stops, it jumps now to this value. We have another low point here at uh, K. So I'm going to use the union of k with an open bracket all the way to positive infinity because this reaches here again up to positive infinity. So this is the trickiest one, um, but uh, you, you'll get some more practice with this too on your homework. Alright, that's the end of the lesson. Nice job.